Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, where we stay here to help people balance their lives. And today we have a very special guest. I'm very excited to have her on the show. It's Arifa Bevan, and she is here. She's a coach, and she works with empowering people, helping them with mindfulness, and she helps people from all walks of life, from moms to people, entrepreneurs, to people in business, to everything and everyone. And today she has some great information that she'd like to share how to incorporate mindfulness into your daily lives. I'm so happy to have you on, on our show, Arifa. I think it's so important that people understand in this stressful world that we live in today, how mindfulness plays a huge impact on how we can help ourselves and help our our, you know, cope with different things in our lives and be able to overcome stress because 70% of illnesses come from stress alone. So if we learn how to use mindfulness as a tool to help us through the daily obstacles that we, we have to endure, it could really be a game changer for us all around. And so tell us a little about yourself and what you do. And I want to hear more about this mindfulness. I want to hear what you have to say about it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, firstly, for having me here, Stacey. Super excited, especially to have this conversation, because I always say that talking about it, I love doing it, but talking about it also helps me as well, too, on this mindfulness journey. So really excited to be here and to be a part of this conversation. Um, so yes, I am an empowerment and executive coach, really specializing in mindfulness and empowerment and working with individuals and businesses, really helping them and their team um, on the path to wellness, um, whether that be the first time learners or folks who just really need support and a nudge along a journey, this journey, because it is a journey. Um, yeah. I am a certified uh, health coach. Um, I'm also a mindfulness and meditation instructor, and I have um, an extensive background um, in community wellness as well. So this topic and this work is just near and dear to my heart and, and what I do and so it, it drives me to support others, but it also, again, helps me as well. So super excited to have this conversation. I am so excited too. Now, you mentioned that you really do a lot of work when it comes to mindfulness and people in life struggle so much, you know, and they go through a lot of stress and, you know, what are some of the ways that we could actually take mindfulness and incorporate it into our lives so we could actually learn how to deal with stress and release our, our stress so we can live a, a life of calmness and we can have more clarity and be able to function better as a, as a person? Yeah, great question. So I'm writing down some notes that I, I don't forget because I can keep talking and talking about this, but you know, when it comes to mindfulness and this journey, I think one of the most important things that has helped me, especially in what I tell my clients is, number one, we will always have stress in life. Um, mindfulness is definitely not about um, eliminating stress because that's pretty much not possible. If you are someone without stress, that is fantastic. Like, I would love to talk with you about how you do that. Um, yeah. But so it's really not about eliminating stress, right? We're going to have it. Um, yeah. Instead, it's really about how do we respond to it, right? Because we yes. will have various forms of stress, right? Throughout our lives yeah. in, in various different shapes and levels, right? Yes. Um, so we really do want to first start with that. How do we kind of recognize and accept the fact that, okay, we will always have stress. However, let's think about how do we respond to it? Um, yes. And so- that's really the first thing that, that, that I tell folks is, you know, let's kind of level set there. Um, yeah. And then to your question about, you know, how do we incorporate it? Uh, you know, it's really about firstly, what resonates with the individual, right? And so, you know, for me, I, I, I'm based in, in the beautiful upstate New York. And so for me, I find that a lot of my balance comes from being outside in nature and 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 really finding comfort there, right? And so um, I don't have the ability to, you know, go hiking every day or every other day for an hour or go for a walk even for an hour, but I do have the ability to at least step outside um, for 10 minutes or even take my coffee outside for a little bit and, you know, put the phone away, walk away from the laptop and just take a breath outside yeah. right and so what i encourage folks to do is you know think about what gives you joy what makes you smile right yeah. and incorporate those little moments throughout the day as best as you can it doesn't have to be this full one hour um you know thing that you do which again is great it's wonderful but yeah. if you chunk 
down just a little bit, right? And set aside yeah. some time throughout your day to do those little things that make you smile, that make you happy, that make you laugh. Um, then that's how we really start to find that balance. Um, and, you know, the last thing that I'll say is, I keep using the word journey and I am using that word intentionally. This is not about perfection. Um, yeah. You know, there will be days and times where we are exhausted and tired and we are just, you know, not feeling our best. And that yeah. is okay. <laughs> right. right. Um, that, that is okay. Right. And so we have to give ourselves permission um, to just not feel so great, but then get right back at it the next day or the day after. And so it's a journey. It's, you know, we're always learning. I'm always learning. I'm always in that practice mode as yeah. well right? to just remind myself did, did I step back a little bit? Right. Did, did I, yeah. did I take a break? You know, did I, you know, am I holding my breath? Am I deep breathing? Right. And so for me, uh -huh. it's always that constant reminder, that constant practice. I think that's such great advice. I think, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they say they're going to do it, they're going to do it and they do it maybe once and they do it twice. And then they start slacking because they get so involved with their daily responsibility. Uh -huh. You know how, you know, and when you say to someone, oh, you know, you, you know, you should take only like you could just a few minutes or a short walk or just something to release yourself. Oh, I don't have the time. And what do you say to those people who say, I don't have the time? Yeah. So what I say to those people is I, I provide an example um, of something that hopefully they have the time to do. So um, an exact example is I do um, a lot of workshops for organizations virtually, right, who are looking to um, improve the dynamics or team culture or, um, or environment um, of their, their teams or their organization. And a lot of the time, these are folks who are just at their desk, right? Like they just... Yeah or go, 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 um, meeting to meeting, um, right? And so one of the things that, um, because that is absolutely a, a question or feedback that I get a lot. And so we go into um, a practice that I encourage folks to do, which is take a look around your room or the office or your desk and, and wherever you are and find something that makes you smile. So for a lot of people, they will have a picture of their family or their pet or their desk is in front of a window and there's like a beautiful view in front of them. Find something that you find delight in and just yeah. focus on that for one minute. Just right. avert your eyes away from the computer, from the phone or whatever in the world is stressing you out and just focus on that for one minute and then come back and tell me how you feel. And so I love those type of questions because that is the reality of it, right? Life is moving yeah. so fast. We are all so busy. And so examples like that provide people an opportunity to say, okay, this is something that I can do while I'm sitting here and, and feeling like I can't just go away real quick, right? Um, right. You know, I'm gonna sit here and find something that I can like, you know, focus on for just one minute, right? And, yeah. and allow me to just take a beat, take a pause, before I get back into it. Um, and so that is my my response to that. And and sometimes my response is, is um, not an exercise, but a story where I did do just that. Um, I was at a former job and and something really stressful happened. And, and Stacy, it was so stressful that to this day, I don't remember what it was, right? Like, like, like that's yeah. how, like, it's funny how like, at that moment in time, it was the most stressful thing in the world. But yet now looking back, I didn't remember what it was, right? But yeah, yeah. what it was, it stressed me out really badly. And um, I remember I was just kind of panicking and freaking out. And I was like, okay, I need to just step back and, and turn around from the computer and just, just take a pause, right? Yes, so I yes. sat, stepped back, turned around, and there is my cat just laying on the bed, just arms out, legs open, and just like laying there, just enjoying a nap and enjoying his life. And when I tell yeah. you, I laughed so hard because I thought to myself, here I am panicking and, and, yeah. and here is this cat just sitting there enjoying life, being happy, doing his thing. And, and I just, yeah. I, I, I just laughed. And that kind of, it, it just put things into perspective for me. And, and it helped me to realize that, you know, this really isn't that big a deal. And, and Hey, yeah. this dude is, is, is comfortable enough to just lounge out in the open like that. Like I must be doing a good job anyway at life. And so right. 
Yeah, it really did help. And so for some people, when I share that story, they share a story about how, you know, for folks working from home, like their kids will, you know, do something funny that will make them laugh or, you know, their pets as well, too. And so like that is really, you know, it helps us to be grounded um, and also remember that outside of the chaos that there are these little moments as well. Oh, I love it. I love it. You know, and, and that's so true because sometimes, you know, you could be stressed out and then you could just look over and your pet will be there or, you know, something that just yeah. that smile on your face and it, it could totally change your whole demeanor. You know, it, you can go from Absolutely. being feeling stressed to all of a sudden just having a, a, you know, just a smile on your face. And then all of a sudden you feel that cortisol level kind of going yeah. down and, you know, you start like really, you know, thinking and, and start really relaxing. And, and, you know, I, and I think too, is just appreciating too. It's like, sometimes I just, you know, learn how to get away from, you know, what I, what I don't have and what I, you know, what I, you know, and I, I need to do this and da, 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 da. And just for a minute, just have gratitude for what you do have, you know, and look around you. Sometimes the littlest things can mean so much. And sometimes we don't even realize until they're taken away from us, you know? Yeah. 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 And and you're calling out something really important, which is the gratitude piece, right? Because what I want folks to um, not misunderstand is what we, we, you and I are not saying is that, that your stress is invalid. Like it absolutely is valid. What yeah. we are saying, and, and I don't want to put words in your mouth. So I'll say what I'm saying when it comes to gratitude yeah. is, is it's, it's choosing a feeling that yeah. helps us to feel better and recognize yeah. that despite all this chaos and stress, there is also this amazing part of our lives as well. Right. I appreciate you calling that out. Oh, you're welcome. No, it's, you know, I just, I feel like sometimes when we're doing mindfulness and we're practicing and incorporating into our lives, I think sometimes just like, you know, having gratitude, you know, in our lives could, could help with the process, you know, and I, I think I, you know, people don't realize how the power of, of this having, being able to have gratitude how much, how powerful it really is and how it can really change you, you know, if you yeah. incorporate. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I mean, again, this is one of the, the exercises I do, but there's so many ways, right. To, to express gratitude, whether, you know, some folks like to journal, some folks like yeah. to, um, you know, at the end of the night, kind of write down, you know, five things that happened today that they're grateful for, or even just have yeah. a conversation with their partner about, you know, something good that happened um, that day. And so, um, or again, with the one minute exercise, kind of looking around you and seeing something that that you are grateful yeah. for and expressing that, right? And so um, incorporating that um, is one other method as well throughout the day that can absolutely help on our journey. And, you know, I, I knew someone from a Red House Wellness uh, retreat. She used to make the people who came, she gave them a jar and she would, mm-hmm. and she would give them tabs of paper. And, and before they even started their day, as soon as they got up, they were required to write five things on five different slips of paper and then just put it in the jar. And you mm-hmm. had to write down what you're grateful for just to, to start you on your, I guess, to help you refocus. And instead of thinking about anything else before you woke up, you're thinking yeah. about what you have gratitude for. Yes, absolutely. Even like as simple as like, wow, it's it's a beautiful day out. Like yeah. it's it's a beautiful day out. That that's great. I'm I'm so grateful for that. Like even as simple as that, right? It's enough to really yeah. change our our um energy when it comes to the the feeling and emotions, right? That that affects yeah. so much our outputs and what we do. What are some of the other things that you like that you feel are really powerful when it comes to changing your mindfulness and changing your way of view in life? You know, mm-hmm. some things that people can do because some people struggle and they're they're trying to, you know, they're, they're trying to do so many things and they have so many different hats they're wearing and they become so overwhelmed with so many different things in life. You know, um, what are some of the other you know ways of, you know, applying mindfulness and reducing stress in your life that people can incorporate as well? Yeah, so one um one option and method that I strongly encourage folks to pay more attention to, right? Because again, this is a journey and it, it's it's for many the um automatic assumption sometimes is, you know, well, you know, it's so hard, right? And and yeah, no one ever said it was easy. It takes practice. Um yeah. which is be more aware of your words and and your thoughts, right? Um yes. more importantly, how we talk to ourselves. Yes. That is 
so critical, so critical. Um, yeah, I love uh, science. I actually used to want to be a scientist growing up. And so um, I tried to balance that out, right, with, with what yeah. I might do in my work. But what I when I talk about this, I share that, you know, our subconscious mind takes everything literally. Yeah. Uh, even if like we may say something in jest and we may be joking, it takes it literally. And so yeah. when I talk about this with clients and, and, you know, with these workshops is, really about the fact that, of course, when we talk to people, our words are important, but especially ourselves, um, yeah. especially ourselves. And so, you know, on one level, it's it's how we talk to ourselves, right? But on another level is really being mindful of the words that we use, because I have many folks who are very much intentional about this journey and, and wanting to learn and evolve. And uh, one of the things that we talk about is, especially when it comes to words, is, you know, the 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 negative words, right? And so I may have someone who says, you know, um, well, you know, I was, you know, focusing, um, you know, on my, you know, intentions and my words and, and you know, I was saying stuff like, you know, I, I um, for example, I'm not going to be sick or, um, you know, something along the lines of, you know, I will not mess up in this presentation or, you know, um, and, and we'll talk about those negative words like not or can't yeah. and, and the reframing, right? The importance of the reframing to say, instead of that, how about we say what you are and what you yeah. want and what you want to claim, right? Um, right. So that, you know, we can reframe that to make it more of a statement. And again, yeah. going to the scientific side to say that science has shown that our subconscious mind can't even process those words. So when we are saying things like, you know, I'm not going to fail, it really hears, I am going to fail, right? And so yeah. at our core being, it's so just interesting for me that at our core being, we are these these positive individuals who really at the core um, have this positivity and, and this radiance of of just light and and just positivity and positive energy and so our subconscious mind can't can't process those negative words so then how do we reframe that and and empower ourselves to to speak what we want and what we want to claim and so there's a lot of conversations I have about the power of our words the power of our thoughts especially how we talk to ourselves yeah. And I think sometimes people are so critical on themselves because they have low self-esteem or they lack love, you know, they, they don't love themselves and getting, you know, it's, it's very hard for some people to actually like the person who they are. A lot of people struggle with that, you know, mm. and it could be because they, the way they were taught growing up, they could have been criticized a lot, or maybe they just didn't like, they didn't meet up to their own expectations, which sometimes mm. I think runs, you know, to, to the area of self-esteem, but when, yeah you can incorporate mindfulness and incorporate, you know, the way we, we think about ourselves or way we, you know, how we love ourselves. What are some tactics that maybe you could do to change your thoughts, to change the way you feel about yourself? Yeah. So I had a workshop uh, late last year about this topic. And one of the things we talked about is firstly defining what self-love is, right. And, yeah. and what that looks like, because even now, right. And, and for a long period of time, you know, with the power of the internet and social media, that looks like, you know, commercialism, like going out to buy something in order to make yourself feel better. Like self-love means yeah. that I have to buy this new thing and and do this new thing. Like, no, <laughs> because that's yeah. outside of yourself, right? Um, right. And so, uh, you know, we kind of start again with that foundational level setting of, you know, how do we define this, right? What does this yeah. really mean? Meaning that when we sit alone in the quiet with ourselves, what mm -hmm. does that look like? What are the feelings that come up for you, right? Um, right. And you have a lot of people who even struggle, right? With with the, the quiet, with just being, just being with just themselves, yeah. right? Um, yeah. And so we talk about first that level setting of, of what that, that means. What is self-love? What does that look like? And so the conversation then goes to, words, right? How are we talking about ourselves, right? And yeah. then how also are we, um, how does that outwardly express in terms of who do we let into our space, right? Yeah. Um, you know, because unfortunately, a lot of folks who are struggling with that don't 
let the best people into their lives, right? Or are maybe afraid to cut off the people who may not be the best in their lives, right? Or feeling like they deserve, you know, not the best people in their lives, right? And so right. You know, starting with um, the words and then moving on to, you know, what does that look like in terms of who we allow in our boundaries, in our space, um, and then talking about boundaries, right? How do we protect ourselves? How do we set up and maintain those boundaries, right? And so that looks... Um, both for the, the the personal but also the professional workspace, um, both are are very much important, especially as it relates to boundaries. Um, you know, because so much of our self care can get lost um, when it comes to the workplace, especially when it comes to boundaries. And so, um, boundaries are another big conversation in terms of self care and self love, and how do we again set them up, but also most importantly, how do we maintain it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And I think you made a really great point when it comes to um, how we feel about ourselves. A lot of times we we tend to surround ourselves with the same energies and, you know, you're struggling in life. A lot of times those negative people in our lives, we may care about them. They might be good people, but their negative energy draws from us and it, and it, and it like a vacuum and it, they drain us. And there are sometimes their negative thoughts kind of kind of fall on us. And even though we may deep down inside, we may not believe it all of a sudden when you have people surrounding you and constantly saying certain things, sometimes it rubs off and you start to think that way. And, and so I think sometimes we have to like look around who the people we are we have in our lives. And even though they're they they're they're our friends or we might be afraid to let go of them, you have if you want to elevate to the next level in life, if you want to have a, a better life, you have to, you know, decide, well, you know, I maybe I just need to separate myself, you know, like you don't have to like, you know, stop conversation completely, but maybe instead of talking to them all the time. Maybe talk to them, you know, every so often and, and, yeah. you know, keep the conversation, you know, just, you know, on a, yeah. a, a ochre level. Yes. I, I appreciate you saying that. And, and, um, it's a, an important conversation, right? Because I understandably get the fact that people can have that. And I've had it, the, the guilt of, of letting certain people go who no longer serve the journey or path that, that you are on. And I had to learn that, it's okay to do that. It's okay to wish someone well, wish them all the yeah. best in life. However, y'all are literally not on the same playing, same wavelength anymore. And therefore you just need to move on. Um, yeah. And and that is okay. It is okay, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so, and and again, understandably, um, a lot of folks struggle with that because, you know, we are social beings, right? And, and you know, we, we want that type of connection, but then we have to ask ourselves at what cost for ourselves, you know, is that connection, right? Um, yeah. And so I, I've had to get to the point and coach others to get to that point of, of feeling okay, right? Like wish them well, all the best to them but this is where you are and this is where, where they are. Right. And, and yes. so, and being able and being comfortable um, and secure enough to move forward without them. Oh, a hundred percent. I also, you know, you, you mentioned about self-care and self-love, you know, when it comes to self-care, I think a lot of people I've noticed this, they feel guilty to give themselves mm -hmm. self-love and self-care. You know, and if you can't take care of yourself first, how could you take care of others? But a lot of people feel shame or guilt because they feel like my kids come first or my husband comes first or my partner comes first. And I, you know, I have to tend to this person, that person, and, you know, and they drain themselves out. They emotionally, they start to, they struggle mentally, physically, and, you know, it's okay, you know, I feel to be able to put yourself first, because if you don't put yourself first, how are you going to help others? How are you going to be a benefit to society? Yeah. What do you think? I agree with you completely. I mean, there, I'm even struggling to find a better way to say it, because that, that, that really is what it is, which is if we are not taking care of ourselves truly how can we take care of the people that, that we care about, the people that we love, the people that we are supposed to support? Because our bodies and minds will shut it down, will yeah. we'll shut itself down to make you and force you to take yeah. care of yourself if you are not doing it. And it will not be for the best. Um, right. Because unfortunately, you know, again, like you just said in the beginning, so many health issues arise, right, from this. Yeah. Um, and like I mentioned, we will always have stress, but really how are we maintaining the balance and how are we responding to it? 
Um, right. And so the, I mean, I, I've been through many times where when I'm not taking care of myself, I will get sick. I mean, I will get ill and my body will shut down. Um, yeah. If I don't get enough sleep, I will get sick. My body will shut down. And so right. in order for me to operate at the level that I operate and support the folks that I love and, and, and want to help, I have to, I have to sleep. I have to take care of myself. And again, this is a journey, right? Because of course, there are many days where I don't do the best. I, I absolutely do not do the best, right? And so maintaining that balance as best as we can is important. And remembering that this is not about perfection, right? But yeah, we yeah. have to remind ourselves that this is a priority, that it, it really does matter. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, I, I think it's so important that people really get that through their head and, and you know, I feel like it's it's so important to to really maybe create a journal for yourself too, and and what are your expectations, and and what do you want for yourself, and who do you expect to be, you know, like what what's your goals, you know, because I think sometimes if we if we can give ourselves clear objectives, you know, of where you know who who is who is you know um, who am I, where do I want to be? Who do, what, where do I see myself in three months or six months or a year from now? You know, what, what do I want to achieve? Then we could start creating constructive goals for ourselves. And then I think that could help mindset too. What do you think? I absolutely agree. I definitely think it can. And that reminds me of one exercise I share with folks where, um, they, on a notebook, piece of paper, they write down their name, draw a circle around their name, and around their name, they also write out different, um, whether it be emotions, situations that they want to bring into their life. So yes. for example, it can be, and, and I always encourage folks to be as specific as possible, right? And so yeah. as an example, if someone is looking for a new job, their name, draw a circle around your name, and the job could be one word that you write down, um, the yeah. salary that you're looking for, the location, the type of environment, right? Welcoming environment, wonderful yeah. manager, um, you know, great and supportive team. And then after you write down all of those words, then I ask them to draw arrows into your name, meaning that you are then visualizing calling that into yeah. your life, right? As well. Um, and that is a, a, at least for me, it's worked well in some of my clients as well, a very powerful and visual yeah. exercise helps us to, like you said, kind of um, think about our goals, where we want to be and what we want to call and claim into our lives as well. And it's something right. that you can go back and refer to and reference, right? In case you need uh -huh. that emotional boost or that reminder, um, you have something right there that you can reference. Oh yeah. I like that a lot. I think that's so beneficial. You know, I, when, when you're working on yourself, you know, a lot of people get frustrated because they feel like they, you know, they want to see quick results, but mm -hmm. when you're changing, you're, you're changing yourself and you're changing and you're applying mindfulness, you know, when do you start, you know, for people who are trying to make changes and they're starting to get frustrated because they, they don't see themselves where they want to be, you know, can you explain to them that it's a process, you know, and, and what type of process it is? Yeah, it is definitely a process. And, you know, I'll say that it, it in terms of how quickly you start to feel things, um, emotions are quick, they come and go, right? And so depending on the individual's goal, right, whether it is um, to manage stress, because when it comes to stress, it, it is a lot of our emotions as well. And then, of course, the situation, but again, it's how we respond to the situation. And so yeah. when it comes to individuals and teams and, and clients who have a goal of managing stress, that's something where we can see results, uh, I'm using air quotes, fairly more quickly than we can with other um, factors of mindfulness, meaning that when a situation occurs, we can shift our emotions in terms of how we respond to it, right? Rather right. than and freaking out or talking down about myself. Instead, I am going to respond in this way and be calm yeah. and take my time and talk positive about myself. So there are certain things that can absolutely be done and, and shift the way we feel and see things in the immediate future. Um, yeah. That does not mean that you're going to do it again the next time, because this is something that is absolutely a journey and a process and takes practice for sure. Right. Yeah. Um, but our emotions are definitely some things that we can 
shift rather quickly, but the ability to do it um, almost inherently and fast is again, going to take practice and take time. And so um, it, it's, it's, it's an interesting concept. Um, yeah. because of the fact that, that this is a lifelong practice, but a lot of the results and what we see can be quick. And then a lot, maybe not so fast, right? Like if we want to um, have a goal again around, you know, a new job or, you know, you are um, trying to manifest something else in your life. Like we don't know how quickly that's going to be. Perhaps it is fast depending on, you know, the situation itself. We don't know, but we have to be okay with the fact that, um, from an emotional and, and manifesting perspective that this is something that you know you will receive and you right. know it's coming. And therefore, rather than mulling over the fact that you don't know when, you have accepted already that it's already there for you and it's waiting and right. it's going to come when the right time is there. Oh, I love that. I love that. You know, it's 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 uh, so important that people learn how to handle stress. And I know that some people, I know a lot of people actually, they talk about this too. When it comes to stress, a lot of people, when they can't get certain things out of their head and mm -hmm. they, they will actually start to think of the scenario. Well, when I see that person, this person says this to me and I'm going to say this and, <laughs> that, and they yeah. make it a scenario yeah, yeah. in their head yeah. and well, they're yes. starting to get, you know, their blood pressure is starting to go up. They can yes. feel the stress. Yes. Not yes. even something that didn't even happen. It's something that yes. they created in their head of, you know, yes. a, a situation. And, you know, yeah. what do you say to that? How do you avoid that? Oh my like, gosh. That is, you, you know, that is so funny to me because first of all, my husband does the same thing. And I'm like, why are you putting energy into something that doesn't happen? Put your energy into something that you actually want to happen right. instead. So like exactly. have two responses to that is um, the first is these individuals, because I've heard the same thing, they don't even know that they are they are creating and manifesting and like all the things like doing exactly that. Like you are picturing the situation, um, mm -hmm. your body and your emotions are reacting to it, not in the best way, right? right. Mm -hmm. So like people who um, don't believe like in, in mindfulness or, or manifestation is like, this is a, an exact example of how you actually are. And so, yeah. uh, you know, my first response to that is flip it instead of like, I, I like, it, and I, again, this goes back to what I was saying. I know it's not easy. Right. But yeah. helping and encouraging folks to like, instead of the, what you don't want to happen or worst case scenario, change that to say, what do you instead want to happen, right? right. Uh, envision what you actually want the conversation to be um, and yeah. allow yourself to feel the emotions of relief and put your energy towards that. Um, yeah. There are leaders, and I wish I had the name of, of this particular like Roman emperor um, who would actually sit down and have conversations like out loud um, before meetings, before he meets with these other leaders, like about uh, whatever the situation it was and, and the conversation yeah. was how he wanted it to go, right? Like yes. really envisioning that before it actually happened. And so, you know, to that, I say, I know it's hard, um, but instead, and again, it takes practice to the point where we will eventually learn to pivot in that other direction, but really shifting, that energy and 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 everything that you're putting into the worst case scenario to instead this can also happen right and and instead yeah. of the worst case scenario happening let's actually put our energy and our intent in our mind into what we actually want to gain and receive from the situation right oh yeah it's totally totally it's so hard i think sometimes for people to let go too like you know that's you know and I, that holds on you know like if are there any exercises that relate to mindfulness that could peak help people to let go because so many people in and that goes even with the the situation that we were just talking about how you, you manifest these things in your head well some people have a hard time too of just letting go you know and when 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 the you know the past is the past so you can't change the past you can only focus on the present and right. you know and create something positive and you know plan for the future but a lot of people have a hard time just letting go and they hold on to situations that have just occurred or have occurred you know you know 
maybe over time and they're just bringing their stress levels up and they can't and they're always you know feeling stress from repressed emotions that already recurred mm -hmm. you know are there ways people could you know exercises or anything they can do to help them in the process of letting go yeah both for myself and clients that I've had um who are also struggling with that one of the best things that um we've kind of worked on together, but also that you and I have talked about is the focusing on the self, meaning yeah. that when we, number one, give ourselves permission to take it one day at a time. Mm -hmm. Secondly, when we focus on our self-healing, meaning that we focus on our self-love, our, our self-care, um, our own progress and development all that other stuff starts to kind of fall off to the point where yeah. you either like forget about it or, or like not forget about it, but like where it doesn't even matter anymore in relation to where you are in your own life. Yeah. Um, so for me and for the folks that I've worked with, it's really okay. Giving ourselves permission to say, like you just said, like, this is a past, this happened. I've been hurt but I'm giving myself permission to heal and take this one day at a time. And right. two, importantly, I'm giving myself permission to focus on me and myself. And so yeah. what is it that I need to heal? Is it therapy? Is it more time practicing self-care and what that means for me and what that looks like for me? And if so, I need to get started on that and what that looks like. And so it's focusing on those two key pieces that have helped, again, myself personally, but also clients as well if, with that letting go. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. Now, if you had to take today's conversation and you wanted to emphasize on some important factors, what are some things that you think would be really important for the listeners to really understand? I would say the first is um, that this is, remember that this is a journey, right? Um, that for some of our listeners, I'm sure it would be easy and for others, it will be difficult and accepting the fact that um, by your journey, what I mean by that is you're going to have really, really great days where the practice and the exercises come easy and naturally and quickly. And in other days where you may forget to do about it, or don't feel like doing it at all. And, and again, giving yourself permission to allow that to be okay, because it is okay. Right. But then yeah. getting into it again, because again, this is, it takes practice. Um, you know, I've been doing this for over 15 years now. And so I'm still learning. I'm still practicing. I'm still having to be reminded of, um, about my own words, right. And how I talk to myself. And so it's something yeah. that does not end when it comes to the journey and it comes to the path. And so I would say firstly, um, you know, folks just remembering that, um, this is a journey, right. And, and, and it's a fun one, right. It's, it's a fun um, one. Um, it's a self-exploration journey, right. Of, of growth yeah. and development. And so for our own selves, it's that journey too. And so I hope folks can take that away. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. Now, what are some of the services that you provide? Yeah, so I um, provide one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, that's the first kind of branch of services I provide. So for individuals who are looking to boost their self-confidence, um, who are looking to um, you know, kind of shift the way that they show up in the workplace. I have a variety of different um, coaching packages to work with folks on that who are in that part of their journey. Um, yeah. I have group sessions as well. So for individuals who prefer that um, group setting and team environment where we talk a lot about what we talked about today, but working yeah. with group at, with a group and individuals who have that similar background as you um, is very helpful for a lot of people. So I offer group coaching. Um, and then the third service I provide is I work with a lot of HR teams and um, corporations and organizations to provide trainings and workshops, whether to their teams or one-on-one -on -one executive coaching to support their executives with um, emotional intelligence um, and other aspects as it relates to mindfulness and being a leader. Um, but a lot of these team workshops pertain to work-life balance and just making sure that we are able to gain that mindfulness in the workplace. Oh, I love it. I love it. Now you also give away a discovery call, correct? Do you have a discovery call? Yeah. That you offer? 
Yeah, yeah. So for individuals who are curious more about like how, you know, we can work together and what I do and if we are a good match to work together, I offer free um, discovery sessions where it's a um, one on one with me just to learn a little bit about the individual and myself and my working style. And then we just take it from there. Oh, I love it. I love it. Now, is there um, a website that they can go to to find out more about you or if you have like uh, different social networks? Yeah, um, Empowered Mindful Pathways is where folks can go. That's my my web my website, empoweredmindfulpathways.com. Um, and that's the same name also for my um, social media handle. I'm on Instagram. So folks can reach out to me on there too. Oh, I love it. I love it. Now, you know, I, I, I got to say that this is su such a great episode because you covered so many different ways to imply and utilize mindfulness into, you know, because stress is something that everyone goes through in life. And the problem is a lot of people just don't know how to deal with it and they don't know how to utilize different mindfulness techniques to incorporate them in their daily lives. And, and I think just like you said earlier, um, and I think it's so important if they just take a few moments of the day, just to incorporate some simple techniques into their lives, they'll feel so much better within. And, you know, and that could help during the day. If a, such a, a stressful situation occurs during the day, just taking some of the tools you mentioned and applying it could actually really reduce your stress a lot and be able to help you focus on clarity, help you be happy, help you feel good about yourself, help you like yourself. And that could even increase your self-esteem. So really it's, it's some, you know, mindfulness is such a powerful tool that could actually help your overall well-being in life. So I'm so glad you came on the show to share these things. I think you're wonderful. I hope you'll come back soon. And this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much. It has. Thank you so much, Stacey. This has been a really fun conversation. Thank you so much oh, for having me. Here. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day. Thank you. You as well.